Okay, here's another one. Um, got another district attorney. At least this guy at least had the balls to make uh, the call himself, not to prosecute prosecute two uh, cops that uh, killed an African American man uh, because he quote unquote was reaching for his uh, gun and um, he they were in fear for their lives because he was reaching for their guns and he uh, did not stop resisting. Minnesota this afternoon, Hennepin County Attorney Mike Freeman announcing a short time ago that two white Minneapolis police officers will not be facing charges for the shooting death of Jamar Clark. Clark, a 24-year-old African-American man who was shot and killed in November of last year. Accordingly, the Hennepin County Attorney's Office has concluded that criminal charges are not warranted against either Officer Mark Greenberg or Officer Dustin Schwartz. I want to bring in NBC's Blake McCoy, who uh, is in the courtroom there, or I'm not exactly sure if it's a courtroom or not, but he is in Minneapolis. You were in the courtroom, though, uh, when that announcement was made. What can you tell us about precisely why it was they decided not to bring charges, and what's been the reaction on the ground there so far? Well, Craig, we're in the county attorney's office, and he's the one who made the decision not to, to file charges against these two officers. Simply put, he says the evidence points to the officer's account of what happened as fact. This all happened on November 15th. Police were called to a domestic incident. When they arrived, Jamar Clark's girlfriend was put into an ambulance. They say Jamar Clark approached the ambulance, and officers tried to get him to step away. That's when they say he resisted and would not take his hands out of his pocket. All along, police have said that they tried to arrest Jamar Clark and he resisted. At that point, they fell to the ground yeah. with him and that Clark actually reached for one of the officer's guns. The county attorney today said DNA evidence was found on the handle of the gun and the officer's belt, which shows that to be true. And uh, the other incident that's been in question here is whether Jamar Clark was handcuffed at the time. And the county attorney says there's no evidence that he was handcuffed at the time he was shot in the head, that he was in fact resisting and was able to to uh, touch the officer's gun. That's when the officer's life felt threatened and his partner opened fire. The uh, reaction in this community has been swift. Even during the announcement, we heard some outbursts from the back of the room, people from the African-American community shouting that this is unjust, that the system is rigged against them. They are vowing to take to the streets here and, and they say whatever happens here in Minneapolis today and tonight will be on the county attorney's hands as a result of this decision. Craig? Yeah, we saw those folks, many of those folks took to the streets after the shooting, uh, setting up an encampment around that police station for almost uh, three weeks. Uh, Blake McCoy, we will uh, we will likely check back in with you a little bit later. And uh, let me bring you back into this conversation here. Uh, one of the things that, that struck me was uh, you had a prosecutor here who decided not to allow the grand jury to make this decision. He made the decision himself. Uh, what might have been the thinking there, and what's your general takeaway from this this case? Well, uh, as, as he stated, there's been a lot of controversy surrounding the grand jury process and what some would argue is the misuse of the grand jury process in police-involved shootings. So the state attorney did what he was elected to do and decided to make the decision himself based on the evidence that was praised by the community. Obviously, many in the community are not happy with the ultimate decision. What strikes me about this case is that what the community really is looking for is transparency and accountability. Because as we see in the Walter Scott case out of South Carolina, the Laquan McDonald case out of Chicago, Tamir Rice out of Ohio, many of these cases, the police give one account and the camera shows us another. When you don't have a camera and all you have is police saying, hey, he reached for my gun, uh, we don't have anything else to go by except what the police say. In the Walter Scott case, one of the things we observed besides another officer on the scene was the officer in question manipulating the evidence on the scene. So DNA that's on a handle of a gun or on a belt does not mean that that did not happen exactly the way the officer said it did. The police cannot police themselves. The community no longer trusts their word without objective evidence. Uh, Michael Slager, the officer in that Walter Scott case down in, in South Carolina, remains uh, in solitary confinement there. Uh, Endell Brown, Florida attorney, thank you, sir. Appreciate your insight. Thank you. All right, so um, 
this is bullshit. You got uh, cops with no uh, no body cams, uh, no dash cam, and you, all you have is their word as far as what happened here. And in my opinion, they they staged this. You know, they shot this this man. Now I don't know about the handcuffs being on or off, but I and I don't give a shit about handcuffs being on or off. If you got two cops against one guy, there is. No way that those two cops should not have been able to subdue that one guy without killing him. So this is just another instance of the uh, DA covering up uh, for corrupt police officers. Now there's going to be hell to pay because uh, they have, uh, the citizens, uh, the black community has been on this for a while. And uh, with uh, this uh, decision coming down, I think they're going to really get on this one.